So guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my 2.0 or revised version of the Altoids Survival 10 for me. Now, some of you guys will know about a year ago I did an Altoids 10 finally. I don't know why I never got around to doing one originally in my channel back when it was the cool thing to do, but I've been wanting to revisit this Altoids 10 survival kit and redo one, but I actually had lost the knife that I really prefer to do this kit with about eight, seven or eight months ago, and I recently found it last week. And so ever since I found it, I'm like, you know what this means. Time to redo the Altoids kit, or Altoids 10 survival kit video. And this time I'm going to redo it and put a lot more survival thought into it. And personally, I think like other people commentated on that last survival 10, they really liked some of the ideas, but overall thought that the kit for the most part was pretty lacking. And I had to agree with them. Uh, I definitely, and now, at least now, I can say that I really have upped my game and put a lot more awesome things. So before we take a look at this awesome kit, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already and you want to see more awesome content like this. Okay guys, now let's take a look at what's in here. Okay guys, so now let's dig into this. Now in my original video, and I apologize for all the mosquitoes, but in my original video I did not choose to go with any rubber banding whatsoever and that the reason why most people go with rubber banding is because they jam pack these Altoids kits like this one so full that it wouldn't actually normally close. And so for my first attempt at this I wanted to do a kit that did not require any rubber banding or a kit that could actually truly close on its own using the, its own little locks. But for this one, since I had already done that last time, I decided to just go extreme. Now, as you guys notice, <laughs> with the rubber band off, this thing is springing open. There's no retention whatsoever. And that's exactly the way I intended it to be. So anyways, now let's look at the insides of this. So the first thing you'll notice and what causes this thing to not close very well is that I'm carrying six feet of pretty well interwoven paracord in here. And this is just normal 550 cord. Sorry, these mosquitoes are being horrible tonight. But this is just normal 550 cord. And this actually takes up a lot of room for six feet feet of it. But the reason why I justify it is one, it's six feet of paracord and you have six feet of each of these seven strands. So it actually has a lot of use and there's far more cord than just this paracord. There's around eight pieces if you count the outer shell that are all six feet. So that's the first part. And of course, going down the five C's of survivability, this is cordage. Of course, this entire container is container C. Now the next part, and like I said, my favorite, my absolute favorite knife for doing Altoids survival tins is the mini grip or the Benchmade 556 or even the 550, I think it's 555, which is the uh, different blade of this. Both are excellent options in my opinion for the Altoid Survival Tin. As you guys notice there, these things fit. So what makes this knife my absolute favorite, the 556 and the 555, uh, they, what makes these two knives or these two models my absolute favorite for an Alto Altoid Survival Tin knife is the fact that one, it fits perfectly in here, but at the same time, when you pull it out, you actually have a very usable knife. It's around the same size as an SC Izula, and it's still very usable in my hands, and I understand I don't have the largest hands in the world. I have medium-sized hands, but my hands still fit entirely on this knife. There's just a little bit of back drop off, but for the most part, my hands actually fit entirely on this knife. As well with this knife, I've actually skinned game animals and done quite a bit with it. So this is a very capable woods knife and I'm well aware of it. Another thing is it does also use the very strong axis lock. So I'm not going to say you can do batoning, primarily because this blade length is so small that you could baton like toothpicks with it, but that's about all. So there, this blade length overall does not allow a lot of usefulness, but at the same time, if you tried to put a fixed blade in here, the fixed blade would entirely, the entire fixed blade would have to be pretty much the size of this thing's handle. And so that's what I really like about this knife is that you still have a very usable knife because it's a folder. 
and I said something similar in the original Altoid Survival Tin video. The only difference between this one and the one in that video was that I left the pocket clip on, but because I put more stuff in it this time, I removed the pocket clip, which unfortunately does slim the, the handle down just a little bit, but still not very bad. So with that huge talk out of the way, now let's get into some of the other stuff. So I put a couple rubber bands in here for extra cordage and rubber bands are just really nice to have overall. As you guys noticed, I had a piece, just a small little swatch of bicycle inner tube to overall tie this kit together and that was on the outside of this. So the next thing I have in here that's big and noticeable is a whistle. I'm just rocking a tops whistle in here and it's just a good signaling device. It's quick, it's easy, and it's just overall a nice little piece of kit to have. So the next part I have is a ferro rod, and something I've tested is that the spine of this knife in particular will actually strike a ferro rod, if you guys can see, and I can scrape it. You guys can see there, this thing will actually strike a ferro rod pretty reliably, and so I'm running a 5 16 inch rod in here, it's a pretty small rod. I think in the last one I was running a, I think a close to an one eighth of an inch rod. Something definitely thicker. I know it was uh, a Exotac Nano Striker XL rod, but I'm not running that for this scenario because I like this profile and it's a little bit smaller. So the next part is the compass. Now I'm just running a really basic compass. It's not the world's greatest compass, but it does still point to true north, and it's better for declination than having absolutely nothing. And once again, I found this one to be pretty reliable. It is liquid filled, and overall I really still like this compass, even though obviously it's not the world's greatest compass. Next thing I have is a sail needle, which is just a heavy duty, thick and very robust needle. It also has a very large eye. This is on purpose, or I chose this needle on purpose because when working with natural materials, the smaller the natural material it is, the weaker it is, and also the more time it takes to process a material down to a smaller size. So I chose a larger eyed needle so that I could accommodate more natural cordages. This also would work quite well as an awl due to the fact that it's a pretty thick and sturdy uh, needle. So in here I also threw just a few safety pins just for the fun of it uh, and overall they're quite useful for a wide variety of tasks. I also threw some Swiss Army knife, these are actually Wanger uh, tweezers in here because tweezers once again are also very nice and once again they take up legitimately no room in this kit whatsoever. So the last part in this kit, and I don't know if any of you guys saw it already, there was just around six feet of uh, army trip wire. And I really like army trip wire. And I threw this in here actually before adding the paracord because I was not sure if I was gonna be able to get paracord in this kit. So I just, would, or I just wanted to throw this in there just so that I had some cordage. But I decided to keep it after all because it's still pretty handy. It's still quite thin and I really, I really like trip wire. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that quick and short look at my Altoids, uh, Altoid Survival Tin 2.0 revised. I think I'm going to redo, or I think I'm going to revisit this topic occasionally and go over it every time I think of a new or awesome things to add and change and play around with to help refine it and possibly just give you guys more ideas on how you can make an awesome Altoid Survival Tin kit. And so, anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this 2.0 revised. As always, that's all for now, and I'm out.